I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on linear programming. Here is another question from one of our subscribers. Let me thank Gerard for posting this question and I hope its solution will benefit many others. A retired employee wants to invest no more than 1500,000 by buying a stock of a well-known bank and of a university. The stock from the bank offers 7% interest while stock of a university pays a 5% return. He decides to invest no more than 800,000 in the stock from the bank and at least 300,000 in the stock of the university. Also, he wants his investment in the stock from the bank to be smaller than his investment in the stock of the university. How much stock should he buy for each investment to maximize profit? Well, I'd like you to pause the video, copy the question, solve, and then look into my suggestions. Now, whenever we begin with solving linear programming questions, we should keep in mind what is required. That is to say, what is the objective? Now, in this case, objective is to maximize profit, right? So, objective is max profit. How can we max profit? That is what the objective is. Now, we're looking for investments in two places. One of them is the bank. The other one is the university. Now, bank offers 7% interest and the university pays 5%. Okay, so let us assume that out of the total amount, B is invested on bank and U is invested on university, right? So, so the maximum profit, which is definitely in dollars, so we'll say cost, uh, let's say P, okay, earnings or, okay, let's say profit is equal to 7% from the bank, so 7% means 0 0.07 on whatever is invested in bank plus 0 0.05 on what is invested in the university. Right. So that becomes the objective. Now to find the solution, what we could do is we could first write our constraints, okay. Plot those constraints, find the corners, and then figure out which point gives us the maximum profit. So these are the steps involved, right? Now amongst the constraints, to begin with, we know that the total amount P, um, total amount B plus U is 1500, right? So the first constraint here is that we have an amount which is 15,000, right? So we'll work in thousands of dollars. Let's work in thousands of dollars. So we'll work in amount in thousands of dollars. Okay. I want to actually solve the, pay, uh, the question here in this page and therefore I'm trying to economize on the space here. Okay. So total amount is 1500,000. So since we are working in thousands of dollars, uh, let's say this amount here is bank plus university is equal to 1500, right? We'll write in hundreds. We know all these amounts are in thousands of dollars. Okay, so we are only writing in thousands. Now, he decides to invest no more than $800 in the stock from bank. 
So that is another constraint. So we'll use different inks so that it becomes simpler for us to graph. So no more than 800 in stock from the bank. That means bank B is less than equal to 800,000. We'll write 800, correct? Fine. And at least at least $300 in the university. So university has to be greater than equal to 300. So at least means greater than equal to, right? Okay. And we have also taken care of no more than 800 for bank. Okay. Also, he wants his investment in the stock from the bank to be smaller than his investment in the stock of the university. So that is another constraint that is he wants the investment in the stock from the bank to be smaller. So, so the bank is less than university. Correct. So these are all the constraints which we have to work with. So based on these constraints, let's sketch our graph. Okay, let's do it here. So always we are working in quadrant one since everything is positive, right? So the very first graph, which is the sum of money which we have is 1500 gives us two intercepts 1500 for you 1500 for B right so that gives you a diagonal here so that sets up our boundary so we have 1500 here all values are in thousands right we are taking bank on this side and university on this side okay now, we want bank to be less than or equal to 800. So, so let's say this is somewhere here is the midpoint. We do have a graph for midpoint also. So let's say 800 is here, right? So the color is blue. Let us say this gives us 800. Okay, so we are on the left side of this. We are below the orange line, right? So, so if you are sketching the graph, it is kind of like this. Right. Here, we are on the left. So B is less than or equal to 800. So it is less than. So it is kind of like this. Correct. As far as the university investments are concerned, they are more than 300. So 1500, let's say uh, somewhere here will be 750. And then let's say 300 is somewhere here. Okay. So we are having more than this. So that gives us the university. Now the last one here is that the university is higher than B. So what we could actually do is they're not equal to, right? So, so university is this side. We could draw the line right going through the center with a dotted line. So this is the line which gives university equals to bank but we need university to be higher so that gives us the area which we are really interested in that is our sample space do you see that that is a sample space so the points of interest on this sample space are going to be 
1 is 1500 then we have a point here we have a point here we have this point also right so so that forms the solution space for us correct so we're looking into this area now Now clearly the two points which we should be testing are these two points which will give us some clue of what should be our solution, right? Now remember this is a dotted line. It's kind of slightly different. We don't have greater than equal to. So, so this point of intersection basically is 750, 750, right? So it is So what we need to do is to check the profitability from these two points, right? And see what do we get. So if I use all as university being ex very, very safe, then uh, this point is zero for bank. So the profitability when we use uh, zero and 1500, will be 0 0.07 uh, sorry 0 0.05 times 1500 and remember this is per thousand so we'll add thousand here so that gives us the total profitability so which is 0 0.05 times 1500 thousand and that is equal to 75 thousand dollars okay and if I use this, I cannot use this actually, right? Since this is on the line and we want the university to be higher. So what we could do here is that we can actually use a point where it is 749 and 751. So we can use 749 and 751. Correct? So let's use this. So it is 0 0.07 times... 749,000 plus 0 0.05 times 751,000. So we get 0 0.07 times 749,000 plus 0 0.05 times 751,000. And that gives us 89. 980 20 short of ninety thousand dollars so that is the amount and clearly this is much higher and therefore our suggestion is from this situation that in the university and the bank the distribution could be so for the bank it is 749 and for the university, it is 751. So that will satisfy all our conditions. So we have invested more in the university than in the bank. University paying slightly lesser returns, 5%, as compared to that of the bank of 7%. So to keep it safe rather. And I think that is the best investment. I hope you understand and appreciate the approach so the major idea here is whenever you're working with linear programming, you need to identify your variables. We took B for bank, U for university. And then you need to identify the objective and constraints. Once the objective is clear, work with your constraints, sketch a graph. To sketch this graph, we basically need intercepts, right? So. So to sketch this graph, we actually worked out all our intercepts. Here was a unique situation where we do not have equal to, we have a simple inequality. So it is not greater than equal to inequality. And therefore, we had to split the point, which was 750, 750, in favor of university by one to get our result. So I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. 
Thanks for watching and all the best.